This is the OnStage AS700, and at $65, it's one of the cheapest name brand USB microphones on the market. So let's take a look at the microphone and see if sonically it can even compare to something like the Blue Yeti. I'm Ronan, welcome to Vodek, and let's take a look at what you get in the packaging. So opening up the case here, looks like we have a couple compartments. We have the microphone itself with some silica gel. So that's that's pretty nice. Always nice to include a snack. Got a windscreen here. Got a microphone clip. So this does actually include a stand, which is really cool. Not a lot of microphones, especially at this price bracket, uh, include that. It doesn't have a shock mount though. So if you're gonna be mounting it somewhere where you're gonna get a lot of vibrations, that might be something you wanna consider investing into. We also get a USB cable here. This is, uh, is USB type B. So while I wish it would have been USB C, that's always like, you know, a bonus for something. At $65, I don't really feel it's my place to complain. Uh, it's nice that it's a full size type B, something you get with like a printer or a typical audio interface like a Scarlett, uh, and not like a micro type B um, because those are just uh, really fragile connectors. And finally, we have the cute little tripod that it comes included. So just going off first impressions, uh, everything is nice. It's made out of metal. Ah, oh, the mic is rolling away from me. Uh, but everything's made out of metal, as I said. Uh, the construction feels actually pretty solid. Um, the microphone, there's not any give to the metal, so it's it feels either some combination of thick or built out of a, a more rigid metal, so not aluminum. Although it does, uh, does have that kind of powder-coated feel, but once again, that could be steel. Uh, let's assemble the stand and see uh, you know, if it's any good, if it's worth using. You do get on the, uh, the top of the stand here a Euro to uh, US mic stand adapter, which is cool to see, you know, it's nice that they include that, but I imagine it's purely because of uh, cost saving reasons, because that way they can manufacture both versions of the mic and keep the same stand. The stand, I will say that the bottom part feels uh, actually pretty good. The legs here, they they, they feel pretty, pretty sturdy. Um, but the top part, there's something about this mechanism that just right now uh, isn't super impressing me, but uh, that could be just because I don't have a microphone on it yet. So let's take a look in a second. The way that you attach the microphone is very reminiscent of a Neumann U87 uh, or something like a KSM44 where you have a threaded insert on the mic and then you just plug the mic in and screw the thread and it will pull, sort of pull the microphone into the stand. So that's a pretty uh, cool connection. That's not something you see a lot and it makes it really easy to sort of uh, put the mic on and off without having to rotate the microphone at all, which is less important for something like this that is symmetrical, but uh, Always nice to see. After playing around with this clutch mechanism for a second, I'd say it's it's actually pretty solid. I mean, it definitely holds the microphone and let's see. I mean, you can go. It'll it'll fall over if you if you bump it, but even at such a ridiculous angle as this, I mean, it still stays sturdy. So something more practical like this, like if I, it's not going anywhere if you accidentally bump it with your mouse hand or something like that. If you're using it at a computer or if you for some reason uh, hit it with your face. Not once again sure why that would happen, but who knows. So as I mentioned earlier, you've got the Type B that goes into the microphone and the Type A port here. It's USB 2, but once again, that, that's not gonna be an issue at all. I didn't talk about the features while I was uh, unboxing this microphone because it really doesn't have any. Uh, you get a USB port on the microphone on the bottom and that's kind of all you get. Something like the MV7 from Shure or the PreSonus Revelator. Uh, it's gonna come with like a headphone jack uh, and potentially other software features or, or uh, controls built into the microphone. But with this one, you are pretty much limited to the microphone. And it doesn't have any drivers. It is driverless, so that's something cool. So looks like my computer's already recognized it, which is nice. Uh, but you're not gonna be able to get any sort of fine tune control over the EQ or compression or any other uh, effects without some sort of third party program. Now for a lot of people, um, that's, you know, not gonna be a huge issue because there are plenty of great third-party tools available to fix that or to remedy that problem. But uh, it's just something to be aware of with this microphone. Also, it's only cardioid. So if you can see on the top of the microphone right here, it's uh, listed as the front has the little label and then on the back, you should get some warnings. But it's an only a cardioid microphone. Something like the Blue Yeti uh, has multiple polar patterns. 
So once again, something that you're not getting at this price point that you would get one step up. But for most uses, especially with this kind of microphone with a more like sort of uh, podcasting, streaming style microphone, Cardioid's gonna be probably the best option anyways. So I wouldn't really view that as a huge downside if that's what you're intending to use it for. But above all of this comes the sound quality. So let's take a listen on the computer. So this is an audio test of the OnStage AS700 microphone. Having listened back to the microphone, I can say I'm suitably impressed. The bass was there, but uh, it wasn't overpowering, which I like a lot. That's something that you can get with microphones that are cheap. You can get an enhanced proximity effect sometimes. Uh, as I said, this is a cardioid microphone, so the closer you get to the microphone, the more bass you're going to have in your voice. It does come with this windscreen, but I don't know that I'd use it because uh, I feel like kind of the sweet spot for this microphone is four inches away. Once again, you can add it and that'll uh, prevent against plosives and stuff, but without some further testing on the windscreen, I don't know the quality of it. Uh, so something like a pop filter, like a nice nylon pop filter would probably be, in general, uh, a better choice. The highs on this microphone were uh, definitely there, but they weren't super smooth, but they were kind of transparent, I'd say. Uh, you know, the, it didn't add a lot of color to the sound, so there wasn't, it, you know, you don't listen to a recording and be like, wow, <laughs> that must have been the onstage AS700. Um, but it wasn't, you know, bad, I would say, in any way, especially compared to the competition like the Blue Yeti and the PreSonus Revelator. One area to be aware of that there's kind of a, some weirdness with this microphone is when I was tracking it into my DAW, uh, the game was absurd. I mean, I'm talking like I was about four to six inches away from the microphone during my audio test, and I was consistently peaking at negative two or negative one dB, which is, you know, just one or two decibels away from clipping, which is not great. There aren't any drivers on the OnStage uh, website or any software packages for this, so I, there's definitely not a way to control the gain there because it doesn't exist. Uh, you could, of course, turn the gain down inside Windows or Mac, whatever you prefer. But without further testing on the microphone, there's no way for me to, you know, comfortably say that that's going to actually turn down the gain on the internal circuits instead of just turning down the gain that the computer sees. Because I'm concerned that even at the gain level that these internal circuits are at least at right now, uh, you'd be clipping before you even hit the computer. So you'd be getting at least some level of distortion uh, before, you know, even your DAW or uh, streaming program or whatever you were using. So that's something we'll definitely take a, a more in-depth look at in our full review of this microphone uh, because at the current level, I mean, if you're going to be screaming at uh, Twitch chat or something, this microphone is not for you. So as I said, overall, uh, the microphone actually sounds pretty good to me. Uh, as I said, four to six inches from the face for me seems to be the sweet spot, but if you have a bassy or less bassy voice, you might want to play it with moving that around. We will definitely be comparing this to some other great USB microphones, such as the aforementioned uh, Blue Yeti PreSonus Revelator, and a couple other options such as the MV7, which are more towards the high price end. But if you don't want to miss that, make sure you are subscribed. Anyways, I'm Ronan, and you've been watching Vodek.